You know, it's pretty amazing that we're even talking about these big boys within the context of SFF. Coming in at over 160 millimeters, this is some serious, serious air cooling in the 16 liter Slyker S620. But today, let's take a look and see what cooler makes the most sense. Welcome back to Machines and More. Recently, I built up and reviewed the Slyger S620 with the Noctua U12A and also the Noctua D15, albeit with a single fan due to the dimensional restrictions with this case. This is a really unique case since we're able to discuss these big coolers within SFF. And even though these coolers are a bit excessive for lower TDP CPUs, it's really nice to know where the upper limit and the potential of this case lies given its generous 163 millimeters of clearance. I had the opportunity to add a few more big air CPU coolers to the mix today. So today's comparison will give us a few more insights as to which coolers work well given your use case. The two additional coolers we'll be taking a look at today are Noctua's D15S and Be Quiet's Dark Rock Pro 4. And a big thanks to Nocto and Be Quiet for providing the coolers for testing today. Now, both of these coolers are unique and they are in that upper echelon of air cooling and both will fit comfortably in the S620. To kick things off, the Dark Rock Pro 4 is a dual fan, dual tower cooler occupying about 163 millimeters of height. And it features a 120 millimeter Silent Wings 3 fan that can go on either end of the cooler and a 135 millimeter silent wings fan that can go in the middle of the two towers. Because of the smaller 120 millimeter fan that can go on the RAM side, both of these fans will fit on the cooler when it's used in the S620. This dual fan, dual tower design features a total of seven dual loop heat pipes along with a nickel plated copper base plate. The unit is pretty well put together, good build quality, uh, the cooler features a top cover plate that covers the heat pipe tips. And in fact, if it weren't for turning the cooler around, you wouldn't even know that it's a dual tower design. And this plate gives the cooler a very polished look. The Noctua D15S is a variant of the D15, which I tested previously in this case. Now this cooler is a single fan version of the D15, but it's also slightly different. It's asymmetrical. So flip one way, it's a centimeter higher, which wouldn't fit in this case. And flip the other way, it's a centimeter lower. Since that D15 comes with two A14 140 millimeter fans, and you can only use one in this case, since using that ram side fan would make the height too tall, the D15S is a more sensible choice. And for the height offset, this can actually be a good thing, as we'll soon see. Now this fan is designed to go in the middle of the two towers, though, in the right case, you could mount it on either end, but not this one. This particular one is the black Chromax version and the finish and build quality is also top notch with this cooler. It has six dual loop heat pipes with a nickel plated copper base plate also. So on spec alone, these two heat sinks are fairly close. The Be Quiet comes with an additional fan, which should in theory make it the more powerful choice. Of course, you could add a 120 millimeter fan to the same end of the D15S as well. To be fair, this isn't necessarily a comparison of just the coolers. Certainly, if you're looking to use either of these coolers in a different case, you might find some of this information helpful. But what I really wanted to find out is how these coolers work in this S620 and how that compatibility is with case fans and how they interact with a graphics card with both CPU and GPU utilization. So I set the two of these coolers up with the maximum amount of fans that they would allow in this case. I did have to remove that handle kit from this iteration of the build in order to allow for space at the top uh, for an exhaust fan, which still wasn't possible with the Dark Rock Pro 4. The DRP4 sets up fine with two fans on the cooler, and there is enough clearance at the rear to keep the 120 millimeter slim fan, so I did keep that in place. Now, even though it's less widely spaced than the D15, the benefit is still in as insufficient to allow a top exhaust, at least with the Gigabyte B550 ITX test board in the system. Mounting the DRP4 is a little bit challenging in this case. Now, I 
don't recommend mounting either of these coolers to the motherboard first and then building the rest of the case because you simply won't be able to easily plug in the cables and everything else. You can definitely mount the mounting hardware first, but I would wait until the case is mostly built before finally putting on the cooler. It uses a separate bar to tighten the cooler against the CPU. And this one's a little tricky to manage in a tight space. Once the cooler is on, you'll also find that there's no reasonable way to slide that middle 135 millimeter fan in. So you will have to remove that top cover plate to do so. And then even then, the getting the clips on are a little bit of a challenge. So be patient with this one. Now moving on over to the D15S, it's a slightly different story. That extra centimeter of space isn't on its own enough to allow a top fan with this board, but it is close enough to where you could slide one in, but the blades would typically see interference during operation. So the easy solution to this, at least with the higher CPU socket boards like the Gigabyte and MSI boards is to just slightly bend the heatsink downwards ever so slightly. And there is enough room for that fan at that point. Now within a SUS board, you likely won't have to do that. So that being said, it is a little bit odd here that the mounting rails for the fan don't extend all the way across in the S620, so I could only secure it at two points. Then again, this fan's not really going anywhere because of what's underneath it. But still, there's some potential for improvement here with this case. I also took advantage of this opportunity to further try out the new Slim Arctic P12 as a case fan, and it performed very, very well, and it's practically silent. The D15S, in contrast to the Dark Rock Pro 4, mounts up very easily. All that's needed here is just two screws that are tightened down, and then you can just slip that middle fan in. Because of the single fan configuration of the D15S, I kept the rear 120mm NF A12 by 15 on that same fan header as the middle A14 fan. So that spun up a little bit faster at 1100 RPM or so, while the A14 fan was at roughly 850 RPM. The Dark Rock Pro fans are very, very quiet. And since this was a dual fan configuration already, it made sense to dial down the rear fan uh, on the case. So I just lowered that one to a more reasonable 800 RPM, just to give some noise headroom for those cooler fans to run at about 1150 RPM. So set up this way, these two configurations came in at equivalent noise levels. And along with the RTX 3070 FE running at 50% fans, noise was only three and a half decibels higher than the noise floor. So jumping into results uh, for the CPU only testing with the vented panel, perhaps it's no surprise that the Dark Rack Pro 4 with two fans edges out the D15S, but it's actually a lot closer than I would have imagined for two fans versus one fan with only a one and a half degree gap. In theory, the single fan D15 would be identical to the D15S, but here, the addition of the top exhaust allows CPU thermals to improve just a little bit. With the solid acrylic panel, the DRP4 is still the best here. Now it tops the D15S by three degrees. In fact, it improves upon the results from the vented panel configuration to hit a very comfortable 64 and a half degrees. This was the same phenomenon we witnessed with the D15, which was also set up without a top exhaust. And in that scenario, the acrylic panel appears to focus airflow to go through the cooler a little bit better. So in terms of CPU thermals, the form factor of the DRP4 appears to give it a strong advantage over the two bigger Noctua coolers. Although that's not all we're interested in, right? Another factor some users would want to consider is how the cooler performs in a combined scenario. So let's throw that 3070 into the mix for Red Dead 2. And here we see the D15S and the U12A's allowance for that top exhaust really helps this perform at its lowest temps with the vented panel. A quick check over on CPU temps while gaming shows that the DRP4 is very sensitive to the GPU running. And looking at this cooler design, it's actually not surprising because unlike the D15S, the DRP4 features an open heat fin design, which means that the fans will intake the GPU exhaust directly under it. The D15S here is the winner by a significant margin. With the acrylic panel, the DRP4 allows for slightly better GPU temps than before, uh, but at the same time, the D15S is slightly ahead. However, for CPU temps, it's pretty obvious. The DRP4 again suffers from more interference from the GPU. The D15S with the top exhaust 
is better than the D15 by a bigger margin than the CPU only test. And this would suggest that not only is the top exhaust improving GPU thermals, it's also really helping minimize the impact on the CPU cooler. Now, this is just one game at a moderate CPU utilization. So I would expect the impact to be more pronounced with the CPU at a higher load if you're running a higher refresh rate game. Um, in conclusion though, if you're running a higher TDP chip, such as a higher end Intel, or something like a 5900X, 5800X, while both of these coolers are quite competent, for the S620, I think most users will be best off with the D15S, as long as you're willing to nudge the CPU cooler a bit to get the top fan to fit, assuming you're using like a Gigabyte or MSI board. Now, due to the difference in the fan configuration, it's not as good as the DRP4 in a CPU only scenario. So if your focus is more on CPU only scenarios, then that one is the better choice. But otherwise, the D15S is the gaming and general purpose champ here. It's a reasonably priced cooler and it makes more sense than to knock to a D15 since you're not paying for that extra fan. And it should still give enough clearance even with an ASUS ITX board which has a lower socket. You should still be able to have enough clearance with your GPU. But just know that you should clip the fan on prior to installing the graphics card. And you could also add a 120 millimeter fan on the RAM side of things if you want. In the gaming test scenario, the D15S does yield better CPU temps than the NR200 equipped with the U12A, although the GPU thermals are still a little bit better with the NR200. This single fan equipped tower sees very little impact from using a solid side panel, but it does need that rear fan to help it along. So I would also recommend looking into a slim Noctua or that new slim Arctic P12 for that application. So I hope you found this useful. This Sliger S620 is an amazing case and I'm having a lot of fun testing this one. I've gone ahead and left the full build list and the coolers tested link down below. So feel free to check them out and support the channel. And also please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you again soon.